What's up with you guys? You know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike, and I'm back again, uh, this time with a head-to-head -head comparison between the Ravenscroft 275 and my one of my favorites of all time, Keyscape. Um, and I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I actually did it. Uh, some of you who are diehard subscribers that hit watch stuff as soon as it hits the channel, uh, the notification people to get the notifications know that I did this a couple of months ago, actually. But what I ended up figuring out after watching the video a few minutes after I watched the video, I realized that I did. I had thinning turned on on Keyscape uh, and that presented a problem because Keyscape, when you turn on thinning, it alters the sound slightly, but it alters the sound either way it goes. It, it, it alters the way the piano sounds because it kind of thins the samples uh, so that they don't take up as much CPU or whatever the case may be. Uh, so it was kind of unfair to do Keyscape on with thinning on versus Ravenscroft 275 with no, you know, type of, you know, um, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? Not, you know, it's, it's unfair to do full sample Ravenscroft against Keyscape that's kind of crippled. So I felt that I would do it a little bit better. So I immediately deleted it and said I'd just do it again at a later date and do a comparison, a fair comparison against them with Keyscape with no thinning on. All right, so let's jump into it. You heard a little bit on the front end of Keyscape playing. Now I'm going to kind of switch here. I'm going to turn my mic off and I'm going to play a little bit of Ravenscroft. Then I'm going to jump to Keyscape and kind of keep the same chord progressions uh, and let you kind of make the judgment uh, on the difference between the sound. Let your ears do the listening and then we'll dig into the settings which really kind of sets these two instruments apart. <laughs> So that kind of gives you a, a good picture of what they both sound like. And as you can tell, right out the box, this is just right out the box. This isn't like with any tweaking done. Just right out the box, you'll notice that Keyscape has a slightly warmer, more intimate uh, feel when it comes to the instrument as opposed to Ravenscroft, which is more bright, uh, more... It's warm as well, but it's brighter in some areas. I and mean, that has to do with the fact that these are, of course, two different types of pianos. And I say that all the time when I talk to people, when they ask me questions about which one is better. I say, well, it's not about which one is better. It's about which one uh, sounds best for what you're trying to do. Now, Ravenscroft is a different type of piano. It's a German kind of grand made of totally different wood. Whereas a Yamaha C7 is... Um, made of totally different wood as well. They made totally do two different bills, two different body size styles. The Ravenscroft, the actual piano is a bigger piano than the Yam Yamaha C Grand. So there's a difference in the sounds and it has to do with the way it was sampled and the way it was mic. There's 10,000 
factors that go into the fact of why it sounds the way it sounds. So what it comes down to is what does it work for you in a live situation, which sounds better, what type of music you're doing, all of that kind of things like that. So let's get into what the, the stark difference is, is which, the, which is with the tweak. So we'll start with Keyscape because I'm right here on it. So with Keyscape, uh, you have several, several, several tweaks. In the main area, you have reverb, you have pedal noise, release noise, velocity, sensitivity, uh, all of that good stuff. Then you have an EQ section where you can do your EQing uh, of the instrument. You can do compression here, uh, and you have tape. And you know how I feel about tape. Everything sounds better with tape. Unless you do mixing, you don't understand tape. It's just when you just take tape and you just throw it on something. It immediately gives you that wow factor. That's just my rant right there. All right, so you got compression and tape, and then you got tweak here uh, where you can kind of deal with the feel, the natural, gentle, tight. You can change your image, which I really like that you can go from stereo to mono because there's some situations, especially with recording, uh, where you need a mono recording of the instrument for whatever reason, as opposed to doing it in stereo, depending on what you're doing. Um, stereo doesn't always work, you know, you know, and that works a lot that goes into the mixing side of things as well. Uh, then you have your other settings, which is your voices. So if uh, Keyscape is using up a little bit too C too much CPU, you can jump into this section and you can uh, drop your voices down. Uh, that's kind of like polyphony, so to speak. You can do your uh, gain and all of that good stuff like that. And then thinning, thinning always kind of, you know, thins the samples. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier on the CPU. And then you have your velocity curve editor here, and you have different profiles for different types of keyboards, which I thought is really cool that they went through and kind of mapped out velocity curves for each uh, keyboard. And then that's pretty much Keyscape. And then, of course, Keyscape is a library of piano sounds. So it's more of key, keyboard sounds. So it's more than just pianos. Uh, it's electric pianos. It's clavinets. It's uh, uh, key bass instruments. It's vintage like modules and things of that nature. Uh, so it uh, it's more than just the, this, this piano, this one piano. So when you're getting Keyscape, you're getting a whole slew of uh, instruments, you know, that goes along with it. Whereas Raven Scruff, you're just getting this one piano. Piano. So now let's go over here to Ravenscroft and let's just look at the unit user interface a little bit, which is a little bit more compact, everything all in one view, which is really good and really easy when you're trying to tweak things on the fly. Whereas Keyscape, you got to click on tabs and they got things separated. So it really depends on how you think. Some people think a little bit different in that, that organized EQ compression area works for them. Then some of them like to have Give me all of my stuff all on one screen and let me choose what I want to play around with. And then to some people, this is chaos. So it just depends on what type of person you are. But you got your release volumes here, your pedal noise, your key noise, your repetition strikes, uh, silent strike. You got stereo width here. You got your tone adjustment. So you can really tweak this. And then you got four different mic placements. That's one thing that you don't get with Keyscape is control over where the mics are and control over the volume on the mic that they use to sample it. Um, that seems to be a pretty popular thing with pianos being able to control the mics uh, that they use and the volume and it helps you kind of adjust your tone. So you can, you have four different mic placements uh, here that you can turn on and adjust and make it sound, to, to adjust the tone and make it sound different or what have you. You have your dynamics, your unicordia, your muted strikes. It's a lot of little stuff here that you can really play around with and a lot of minute things about it that you can really play around with. Pedal, pedal resonance and true action pedal. It's just a ton of stuff here. Sympathetic resonance. The stuff that you've just never heard of, you know, just is there and you can tweak it and it gives you um, it gives you a different sound and you got your reverb down here or what have you. So a lot of tweaks with Ravenscroft to edit the sound as well as Keyscape. Uh, but I wanted to redo this video. I did it a few uh, did it a few months ago and I just didn't do it right. And when I realized I didn't do it right and it wasn't a fair comparison has nothing to do with the companies or anything like that or nobody contacted me or nothing like that. It's just like, hey, I want to always do fair and honest comparisons uh, with these particular instruments and these plugins or what have you. I don't want to drop a, uh, a video and it's not the full representation 
of the product. All right, so uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with your boy. You know how we do. Hit those buttons that do stuff on the video. The like button, the share button, all of those buttons that do stuff. And we'll look to see you guys on the next stream. I'm out. Holla at your boy.